In this tutorial you will learn basics of graph mapper and how you can use it to create harmonized facade balconies. Based on just one parameter you'll be able to modify how the balconies will stick out from the flat facade. Let's see this in action. Hi guys, Lazar here. Before we start, if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell button so you don't miss anything as we upload new tutorials each week about Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use them specifically for architecture. Alright, uh, this tutorial is inspired by the reference pictures which I found online. Sorry because I didn't write down the name of these projects. The first one, you can see how these balconies sticking out based on the, these curves, let's say. And uh, the next example is uh, quite similar. It has a flat facade with uh, balconies uh, very similar so they follow let's say these uh, curves something like this and it uh, sticking out on the same way as the previous one uh, this one as well and this picture i think is the same project as this one but uh, the different elevation so something similar we are going to create in today's tutorial but before we start i would like uh, to show you what we can modify with the sliders so uh, based on this slider we can set the height of the building. Uh, with uh, this guy we can uh, define how many floors we're going to have. Based on this one you'll we'll set the offset factor of each balcony from the so the offset factor from each balcony from the facade. Uh, then let's move on to the next one. Here we can change on which face of the facade we'll have balconies that will stick out. On this one we can set how much the balconies will be moved from the face. And uh, let me check this one. We can set the height of the glass railing. And the most important one is this one, graph mapper. So based on this curve we set here. Uh, the shape of the balconies uh, will follow it. So if we change the graph type, let's say to parabola, the balconies will look something like this. I think right now it looks like the reference image, like this one. But I will... Uh, okay, we have a Bezier curve. So based on this curve we can set the shape but I prefer a uh, sign on this one all right I will uh, disable this and this one and let's start from the beginning we have a curve in Rhino and we are going to import it in Grasshopper so right click on the curve container and set one curve then we'll move uh, this curve along a z direction so in the t we'll place a z vector but in the factor we'll place multiple values uh, these values will define from the range component and in the d we'll place domain from 0 to 140 it means if we set 0 the initial curve will stay in the same position here 140 the end of the domain it means the last curve in the list will be moved uh, for 140 along a z vector. And within domain from 0 to 140, we are going to distribute 67 uh, values because if we set here 66, we'll get 67 items in the list. And these numbers will be equally distributed from the domain we placed here. All right, so once we generate uh, the values, will place in the z vector and that vector uh, will go in the t input. All right, well, we have a curve move along z vector. Now we can create the closed prep based on these curves. We'll take the curves, place in the loft component, and then uh, because we don't have the bottom and the top face, we'll cap these holes with the component cap holes, and we have closed prep. All right, I will turn off this this one then we'll take um, these curves and find its uh, center point 
with the component area because in the output C we have the points or its center points and based on these guys we'll set XY planes. So these points will be the origin of the XY planes. Okay, now we'll offset these curves in XY plane. So in the C we'll place uh, these guys, in the P input we'll place XY planes and in the D we set for how much you want to offset. All right, once we get something like this, I will temporarily turn it off. And we have offset curves, now we'll explode them because we want to take out uh, these segments and evaluate each curve but on a different position. For example, uh, the last one will evaluate or take out point here and the first one we will evaluate point here and points in between will be something like this. Let me take another color. So points in between will be something like this. So how we can generate these points? First, we need to take out these segments then we'll use either evaluate curve or perpendicular frame component in our case. So let me show you. First, we'll explode and take out the item with index 0, uh, these uh, green colored lines. Now we need to evaluate. We'll use component perpendicular frame. In the C, we'll set reparameterize. It means uh, the T parameter, which we place here, should be from 0 to 1. So, for example, the start point represent the parameter 0, the end point represent parameter 1. So, the values that we should place here should be from 0 to 1. If you want to take out this point, then we should place the number 1. If you want to take out this point, we should place a number 0. If you want to take out, for example, this point from this curve, we should place, let's say, 0.5 and so on. It means we need to uh, generate, let me check, 67 values from 0 to 1. For that we'll use range component, but domain will be from 0 to 1, because we reparameterize this curve. Once we get 67 values from 0 to 1, we will remap it based on the graph mapper. These numbers will be changed if we uh, place uh, these values in the graph mapper and modify uh, based on this curve. All right, now once we get modified uh, values from 0 to 1 based on the curve, these values will place in the T input. But you can see this arrow, it represents the graph button and it means we need to match these trees. So the data tree from the C and the T. You can see the T input or the data that are placed in the C it has 67 branches and one item in each branch but in the T, let me check, it has only one branch but 67 items. So we need to graft uh, this data and when uh, we graft it we'll get 67 branches and one item in each branch. All right. We can either use um, component graft or we can simply right click on the input and check graft. All right, when I turn it on, we get perpendicular frames on each uh, segment. And if we zoom in, we can see uh, this red and green line. Our idea is to use origin point of each uh, plane and move along green line and green line in our case represents y direction. Always uh, red line represents x and green line represents y direction. So each of these uh, origin point will move along y direction. Something like this. All right. So we need to deconstruct each plane, take out its origin point and y direction and uh, set the amplitude to each vector and move the origin point. So let me show you. We'll deconstruct plane, O is the origin, so the point. So we'll take out y direction, set the amplitude of the vector with the component amplitude and this vector will place in the move. 
So basically these points will be moved for 7.2 along this vector. I will turn off this and this guys. All right, so once we get this set of points, we need somehow to merge it with uh, these points. So this set of points and this set of points should be placed in one list. Now it's really important to set the right position of these points within this list. Because our idea is to merge them, uh, these two lists, and in a way that this is uh, index zero, this is index one, index two, three, four. And once we use component polyline, we can create polyline like this here as well. And so on. For that, we are going to use insert items. Insert items will help us to place uh, this set of points on the right position within this list. In the L, we'll place the original list and in the I, we'll place the items that should be merged with original list. And in this input, we should place which index should uh, have these points. I will sketch again. This is zero. This should be one. This is two, three, four, five. So these points should have the index one, but just in this case, if we switch to this phase, then they should have the index two, because then this will be zero, then this will be one, and these points, if we have it here, will have the index two. So the index is based on the segment we take out in the previous step. So this segment, if we take out the segment with the item zero, the index that should be placed here is one. If we take out uh, this segment with uh, index uh, one, the uh, points will have the index two. So that's why we'll set addition. And based on this parameter, we'll set the position of the points in this list. So if we set here zero, and place the addition plus one, these guys will have index one and the output will be placed here. All right. If we set here two, let's say two, output will be here three. So these points will take the index three. I will set it back to zero. And here we have a list of six points. This point is duplicated, that's why we have six points instead of five. And using points from this list, we can create a polyline. I will turn off this. All right. So based on these polylines, we can create a surface. And this surface will split with the original curves we moved along that direction in order to create this surface. So this should be the floor of each balcony. I will add component split surface, in S I will place these polylines and in the C splitting curves we'll place uh, these guys. Don't forget to graft because we have 67 branches, uh, each branch contains one item and here should be the same. Once we cut we'll have two surfaces, you can see uh, two items in each branch, I will take out just one item with the index zero. Let's turn on this. Uh, we get these surfaces. If you want to create glass railing, we can take uh, point lines, extrude them along Z direction. All right, and here we have the box or the building with the flat facade. So we get the final shape and as I mentioned in the beginning, based on this graph mapper, we can modify the shape of the balconies. If you want to add one additional layer of complexity, instead of using just a single value, we can add multiple values. I will take uh, this 
values from 0 to 1, modified based on the graph mapper, and then remapped to the value we generate with the domain. So let's say from 0 to 20. Let's see what's going to look like. So we need to graph this first and then I will place the A. All right. So you can see how these part of the balconies are almost flat because we set here zero. Something like this. And how only these parts are sticking out. All right. If you don't like, we can change graph type to be zero, for example, and modify something like this. So if in case, maybe we want to emphasize the top of the building with the balconies and the bottom one will have really smooth transition. If you are interested in a structured step-by-step -step learning approach with the personal one-on-one -on -one support, 24 seven and homework exercises, Feel free to send application for our Rhino for Architects online course and schedule your call with us where you will get more information about that. The first link in the description. The course covers various topics like parametric modeling with Grasshopper, fluid form modeling with SubD, architectural visualization, animation, presentation technique and way more things. As we currently have a couple of available spots, I invite you to apply even today. Alright guys, if you made this far, thank you so much, I really appreciate Hit the like button if you like this video, consider subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell for the future videos. If you want to get product files of this and all our YouTube tutorials, you can do so by supporting us on Patreon, the link is in the description. You will find there how you can access to all our extended tutorials and product files. I would like to send a special thanks to all our Patreon supporters. If you like what we do, please consider becoming Patreon yourself. Take care and see you soon. Oh, <laughs>